that's okay. Um, I just you know, I want to go on the record for that. But the point is, if a, if a multi-millionaire can't have enough, what makes you think you would feel like you had enough if you went from 55000 to 70000 Or if you traded up from your Jetta to a Passat, that you wouldn't, you know, in a matter of months, be thinking it would really be nice to have that Audi. Folks, there is no such thing as enough. You and I are always going to be saved by just had a little bit more, then it would be okay. Now, this is nothing new. We 21st century Americans maybe have refined this art of the insatiable desire, but we did not invent it. In fact, there's a, a little book in the Bible in the Old Testament called Ecclesiastes, written about 2,600 years ago um, by the man who was understood to be the wisest person of his generation. And he was totally stuck on this enough issue, so much so that he wrote this. See it up here. He writes, So I became greater than any of the kings in Jerusalem, any of the kings in Jerusalem before me. And with it all, I remained clear-eyed so that I could evaluate all these things. Anything I wanted, I took. I did not restrain myself from any joy. I even found great pleasure in hard work. This pleasure was indeed my own reward for all my labors. But, as I looked at everything I had tried, it was all so useless. A chasing of the wind, and there was nothing really worthwhile anywhere. Wow. Well, I think you understand this already. And I think that each of us is also hurting because of it. Because of the suspicion that enough just doesn't work in our lives. But it's on a collision course with the fact that we've already committed our heart, our soul, and our mind to chasing after it. We really don't know any other way to go about life. Now, God has something to say about this. And it may not be exactly what you expect. In fact, I think it very likely isn't exactly what you expect. It is basically two things. One, God can't help you have enough either. Okay? God can't help, help you have enough. And two, it isn't about enough in the first place. Okay, so what is God's message about having more, about having enough? Well, many people think that God's advice is learn to do with what? We think God's response to I can't get enough problem is to deny ourselves, you know, to somehow kind of wean ourselves from this world so that we don't feel all these desires and things that are around us. We think God's answer to this tyranny of the more is to overcome our humanity, that God wants to make us gods, and that way we won't feel all these desires. That's the trouble with religion, this line of thought goes on to think. It wants us to make it wants to make us something that we're not. And we're not interested. Now there's another way that people are interested in addressing this. One way that we think is a lot more realistic and a lot more people take part in. It. It's a lot more peaceful, and that's the self-improvement route. I went to um, BarnesandNoble.com the other day to look at their top books, their you know the, the best sellers. And among the, the top 35, I found these. Everything from succeed on your own terms to total body makeover, Bob Green's total body makeover, that makeover idea is going to be really big these days. How to scan through your life. Now you may laugh at all those titles, I might laugh at all these titles. But there is some good stuff there. Uh, Self-help, at least when you scan proof your life against it in the first place, can actually add something to your life. It can make a lot of things a little bit better for yourself. Um, but here's what's going, to be going on behind that self-improvement, that self-help idea. It's presuming to be honest with the fact that we are human. And is it trying to make us uh, draw the reality of life out of the way we live? It just wants to fix us. All right? That's the idea that operates behind it. We think that's okay. But it's wrong. That isn't what's going on here. If you hear anything that I have to share with you today, I'd like you to pick up on two things. And this is the first one right now. And that is that God doesn't expect you to leave your humanity behind and become a God. All right? God does not expect that of you. And self-help, on the other hand, isn't honest with your humanity. In fact, it's really the other way around. Self-help is a tyrant trying to 
make you something that you don't want to be, something that you can't become. And it is God who understands what it means to be human and loves you just the way you are. Let me explain that a little bit. The book of Genesis is the very first book in the Bible. It starts out by talking about how the world was formed. Okay? Just start to be clear that this is that book is not intended to be a scientific uh, telling of how creation happened, nor is it meant to be detailed in history like we do it. Now, people that have tried to take our 21st, no, 21st century notions of history or science and apply it to these ancient writings are just barking up the wrong tree. I mean, that's just creating problems for themselves. But what is happening in those first chapters, talking about how the world is put together, is giving us a look at God's heart and how God intended creation to be and what God wanted God's relationship to creation to be all about. It's a message of what God intended for us. And it is not that we were created to be gods, angels, or something like that. And somehow we messed it up. And now it's our job to get back up to God's level. Now, God created us to be, according to Genesis, just who we are, people. Um, here we have this from Genesis chapter 2. Would you read this along with me? Then the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Now, there is nothing divine about that. Man is Adam, Adam, made from the ground, Adama. Nothing glamorous. We were not made from clouds and sunshine, but the stuff of this world, the simplest stuff of this world, the dirtiest stuff of this world. We are, in God's heart, part of this world. Humanness, not being miniature gods, is not just evident from the story that describes how we were made. It also comes from the story that tells us how we were tempted to rebel against God. Um, there we find, you know, how were we tempted? Well, you know, think, well, tempted to eat an apple. Yeah, well, there actually wasn't an apple in the Bible. That was the point. But we were tempted to do something else, to take God's place. The serpent who personifies the power of evil comes. So you're not supposed to eat of that tree. And Eve says, well, no, we're just not supposed to eat of this tree in the middle of the garden. Because God says, if we do, we're going to die. And the devil, the Satan, the serpent says, you surely will not die. For God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. He says, you can do this. You will be like God. If you follow this diet and lose those pounds, you're going to be the person you always hoped you could be. If you do these workouts, you're going to have those abs of steel. If you practice these principles at work, you're going to climb the ladder of corporate success. If you do these basic things every day, you will no longer be troubled with all those problems in your relationships. Does that sound familiar? If you can do that, you will be like God. You see, it wasn't in the design, but in our temptation that we are being asked to be like God. To try to drum out our humanity is a perversion of what it means to be created by God and to live in this world. And God knows that. And God says, you know, I love you just for who you are. You keep trying to do that. Now, I'm not trying to beat up my self-help books, okay? There's a lot of good stuff there. I have learned a lot from them. They've been very helpful to me in many ways. Um, but they have a premise behind them, whether it's intended or not, that we're able to fix our way out of our problems. This is just this is just a different version of more and more, and it's really called better, better. And to go down that path, to rid, of our, to rid ourselves of the things that attract us to those books in the first place, is to take us down that fundamental dead-end road. And no matter how much we try to tweak ourselves that way, we realize that we cannot be like gods. So don't give God a bum rap just because you've never quite understood what Jesus came on this earth to help us to understand. And that is that God wants to lead you into your humanity, not away from it. You were created in human, and God loves you for that. And a God like that is worth getting to know. I think you've got something that will help us understand that. Take away. Oh, 
will teach you a course before we get started. It goes like this. We're going to sing it once and then if you feel comfortable, you can sing along. Give it to all of 